Welcome to Applied Hydraulic Engineering. In this and the next few videos, let's see what we can expect to learn from this course. And let's also discuss some of the things we will not be learning in great details in this course. So as the name suggests, uh, this will be an application oriented course in the sense that here we will learn how to apply some theoretical concepts or principles for civil engineering design and maintenance of uh, infrastructure related to water. So the term hydraulic engineering can be used uh, loosely to denote all sorts of applications of uh, principles of fluid mechanics to civil engineering app use. So loosely put hydraulic engineering is fluid mechanics principles put to civil engineering use and civil engineering applications with respect to water related infrastructure or water systems. So uh, much of hydraulic engineering actually developed quite empirically. So it's, it's in some sense an empirical science and the word empirical essentially means that rather than comprehensively understanding the physics of the problem, uh, the focus is on learning from observed data and developing relationships based on these observed data that can be used further in applications. So here you see different kind of water systems. The first one is actually, well, almost prehistoric. So this is the Indus Valley civilization and there you can see the sewer lines being perfectly laid and, you know, at, perhaps at par with any modern uh, civilization's uh, sewer systems. Here on the second picture, what you see is the water supply pipeline of London City's water supply system being laid and much of it is of course under the ground as in most uh, big cities in the world and in the third picture what you see here is underground again this is also underground so underground sewer systems in Paris. So what is interesting to note is that much of this um, I'm not talking about the prehistoric or the Indus Valley type of civilizations, but much of the modern, you know, industry and urban centric civilization. So much of modern civil engineering designs, maintenance, etc. Applications, basically. So much of these modern civil engineering applications were actually initially derived quite empirically. And it was only much later that connections were established between these empirical relationships and the theoretical principles from fluid mechanics. So fluid mechanics, as we know, is uh, relies heavily on principles from physics and mathematics. And it was only much later that connections were really developed between what engineers, particularly civil engineers, have been used for years, sometimes decades, where actually had their roots in fluid mechanics principles, which were, you know, put forward or discovered much later. And I'll give you an example. So uh, starting from the early um, uh, 18th or the 19th centuries, uh, you can Actually, it's not uncommon in civil engineering to design, let's say, sewers or conduits or channels uh, using the empirical relationship between the velocity of flow V and, and some sort of, you know, roughness. So I can write the velocity as some function of the roughness of the channel, the frictional resistance and um, I, I don't really care what the physics behind this really is 
as long as I can develop an, an empirical relationship between the velocity and the frictional resistance. And using that empirical relationships, systems were designed which perfectly function even to this date. It's quite interesting and, and I find it fascinating that later, much later, uh, probably in the 19th century, sometime in the second half of the 19th century, the, those principles in fluid mechanics were actually brought to light which were rooted in boundary layer theory. So it was only much later that people found, found out that you know this relationship has actually its root roots in boundary layer theory which is a totally theoretical concept. So therefore hydraulic engineering offers us this very unique synergy between theoretical principles and practical applications.